<laughs> Hello, and thank you for joining this online learning resources webinar. I'm Brock Turnipseed, Marketing and Coordinate, uh, Communications Manager for the Mississippi State Research and Curriculum Unit. And I am joined today by RCU Project Manager, Cindy Mean. We're excited to be joined by educators from early college high schools in our state to discuss some of their experiences, tips, and best practices for online learning. Cindy, you work closely with our guests. Uh, would you please introduce our panel today? I sure will. Thank you, Brock. Um, we have with us Clarita Jamison, and she is the principal at um, the Early College High School at Cahoma Early College High School, which is located at Cahoma Community College. We also have um, Pam Ward, who is the principal at the Early College High School for Greenville Public Schools, and it is located at Valley State University. We also have joining with us, um, we have Lisa Elmore, um, who is also with um, Sabrina Harris. Lisa Elmore serves as the counselor at the Early College High School, the Golden Triangle Early College High School, which is located at East Mississippi Community College. And Sabrina, Sabrina serves as their assistant there. She, as Lisa puts it, runs the school. Um, but she is the um, on the uh, front, front lines. She takes all the phone calls. She kind of directs where um, parents need to go and kind of provides all the essential information out to um, the community and to the parents of that school. Um, we also have Myra Panel. She is our associate director at the RCU. And she, we're, so we're excited to be here to tell you and I hope they provide lots of great information to help other schools and teachers and educators across the state. Thank you, Cindy. Uh, we know that this is a, a different, a challenging time that has required much adjustment from you and your staffs. Um, Pam, I'll start with you. How long have you and your staff had to put together an online learning plan? Well, actually, uh, we are adverse with that. Uh, we use, hello? Go ahead. Okay, we use Google Classroom quite extensively uh, as a part of our technology integration. So all of my teachers already have or had uh, online uh, presence with the students. So the students were quite used to it. Excellent. Lisa, I'll ask the same question for, for you. Uh, how long have you and your staff had to put together this online learning plan? Well, learning very, um, we weren't all familiar with that, but a lot of the teachers were familiar with WebEx because that's for our uh, community college use. So um, we did kind of get a crash course in Zoom though. We, we learned how to do that and that seems to be more for our teachers and students. Okay. And Clarita, we'll ask you the same question as well. How long have you had to put together this online learning plan? Okay, it was, it was just a delay. Um, we are doing the same thing as uh, Ms. Ward uh, mentioned with Google Classroom. We decided to uh, start using Google Classroom once we attended the uh, Innovative Institute last summer. We thought it was a great idea, so we had a few teachers who started with it, and then the rest of our teachers just went ahead and just jumped on board. We did have to train a few in some of the other things that we uh, do with Google Classroom. We're also doing online tutorials through Zoom as well through, as through uh, Join and Join Meet. Uh, so we're doing those to try to have some type of interaction with our students. The other part is that not all of our students have internet access. So uh, myself along with our counselor and our uh, school uh, secretary, we deliver some uh, hands-on packets to the different communities that we serve just to so our students can stay abreast of what we're doing at the school. Excellent. I think we also have Heather Jackson from Natchez on, if I'm correct. Heather, are you on with us? Yes, sir, and I do apologize for my tardiness. You're okay. Well, we just did the same question for you. How long ha have you and your staff had to kind of put this learning plan together for going online? Uh, well, just like the other ladies said, we've been utilizing Google Classroom, you know, luckily since the beginning of the school year. So our students and teachers were already familiar with the platform and how to use it. So, um, you know, that, that was a good thing for us. So we didn't necessarily have to start, you know, once the pandemic started, that we just continued on um, using that platform as we had been using it. And Brock, um, thank you, Heather, for joining us. It's so good to hear from you. Um, Brock, um, Heather is the um, principal at the Early College High School in Natchez, and they are partnering with Colin. Um, community college there in Natchez, Mississippi. Great, excellent. Well, uh, 
we'll continue on, Heather. We'll just we'll stick with you right now while, while we've been talking about you. Were there any resources and, and people or you know other examples that maybe you turned to when you were trying to plan for the best online methods for students? Well, the number one resources was, you know, just the teachers, because the teachers are familiar with the students, they're familiar with their learning styles, they're, you know, they've already been using a number of resources in the classroom, so um, I just leaned on the teachers a whole lot um, when we came up with our plan. And, Clarita, the same question for you, are there any examples that maybe you turn to when trying to plan, you know, online methods for students? Uh, just, just doing some of the same things that uh, Heather was talking about, just leaning on the teachers because they designed the lessons already to go along with what they were doing in the classroom, just to help train the others that were not so familiar with those or with the Google Classroom. But it, it's all working out, I want to say. Uh, we also looked at some of the other school districts that are surrounding us and that they're doing some of the same things. Like I said, the only drawback is that everyone doesn't have that access. Sure, I completely understand that. And, and kind of what, following along with that, what kind of concessions are you making? How are you adjusting to students that don't have that internet access? What we've done is whatever they're putting online in the uh, in Google Classroom, they have hard copies and other resources that go along with it so that our students who don't have it, you know, they're able to get to it. Uh, major skill of building is what we're concentrating on. So that's what we have. Lisa, the same question for you, as I know GTEx, you have a lot of students in rural areas that may not have internet access. How are you combating that lack of internet access when it comes to online learning? We're actually having our teachers, our students every day, um, and they've gotten progressively um, more in tune with the internet. Like some of them have uh, local or restaurants that have opened up their parking lot to use their Wi-Fi. So we really, at this point, I think all of our kids have access to the words. Um, they may have to devices to give them to use, to borrow, but they are able to hook up um, somehow or another. Th their parents may have to take them somewhere to one of those spots, areas, but able to get access. Great. And we, that we schedule our Zoom conferences a couple of days in advance, and we have them the same time every week so the kids know and know when they have to take them to those locations. Yeah, so it's pretty much like keeping your, I guess, your regular school schedule on time, but you're just doing it during the Zoom time. Absolutely. Gotcha. Uh, Pam, uh, what has the collaboration between the staff been like during this time that you're preparing to move to online learning? Um, I think our staff have done a really good job of pulling together and supporting one of the, uh, I know uh, that teachers are in communication. We have a thing that we use quite frequently where teachers can let uh, other teachers know what's going on. And uh, one of the big things about that is so that we're not overloading our students with uh, assignments so that everybody can kind of pace out what they're doing. Because in addition to doing high school work, uh, our kids are also doing online for Mississippi Valley State. And that's quite rigorous for them. And it's a, and that's something that they're not quite used to. They are not as familiar with the Canvas uh, because we really didn't use Canvas. We were more tuned to a Google Classroom. So now students are getting that experience. And so uh, my hope is that we will start using Canvas a lot more with our students so that they'll be used to this. It'll be a good transition them. That's uh, a good point. Go ahead, Lisa. This, I'm sorry. Once we got into all this, um, we discovered that our students were getting really stressed out because online learning was really different for some of them, our freshmen. And we just, um, we needed Zoom at least every other day. We have a, a staff meeting. Um, and we discovered pretty quickly that we had to kind of pump the brakes and kind of give our kids a minute to breathe and to figure process and you know we had as a staff had to realize that our kids were dealing with a lot of different things not just classroom stuff you know they're dealing with this pandemic just like we are and they're dealing with their parents having childcare issues with younger siblings and all different kinds of um, 
effects that this is having on their families. So we kind of pulled the reins back a little bit and um, weren't so stringent with our assignments. And um, we got a lot of relief from kids <laughs> as they were really, they were starting to have some meltdowns. Sure, I completely understand that. And I think it's also too, it's, it's tough on the parents as well. Uh, Heather, how has the parent reaction been and, and how, have, how have your staff been able to maybe help ease that transition with parents as well? Um, we try to make sure that we keep an open line of communication with our parents. Um, we utilize the Remind app, and so we'll just send messages out to Remind, and a lot of the parents will communicate back. A lot of our parents also communicate with us um, via email. So the parental support has definitely been there, um, and, and just like um, the young lady just said, we, we're just trying not to overwhelm them. Um, we know that the them, you know, transitioning to kind of homeschooling their kids. They may have a child that's high school age, one that's middle school age, one that's elementary age, and we just don't want to overwhelm them. And we just try to provide as much support as we can. Um, we have online office hours where um, between the hours of 10 and 2, our parents know that our teachers are available to assist them with any assignments that they may not understand so that they can best help their child while we're out. Great. Claritha, I'll, I'll ask you this question as well. Um, what are some ways that maybe you've had to change your approach to teaching your students in the move to online learning? Just to think about, because um, for some of our uh, parents, it, it, it wasn't feasible to just have direct Wi-Fi online access fully going in the home and that some of our students would have to share one device with maybe another sibling. So therefore we de developed a schedule where they would know, say, okay, well, uh, one of our teachers is gonna be on at a certain time, but I may not be able to get to her, but she will leave uh, information on Zoom or on, a, on Google Classroom that I can get to when I have the device. So we had to think about that as well. It just made us think that we're gonna have to invest in a, in a lot of technology in the future. And any more that some of our kids now have, especially our seniors, have their own laptops, not Chromebooks, have laptops, with maybe have that built-in Wi-Fi uh, mechanism already in it. It's just, it's something we can do, uh, but we're just gonna have to do it. It's just eye-opening eye to us right now that we're having to deal with all this and still make sure that our students learn. And I think that's overwhelming for some of our teachers, but some of our teachers are just getting into it, showing the other how to do it. And it's, it's good in a sense, but it's just making us think about the future. Pam, I'll ask you that same question. In what ways have you had to maybe change your ways you approach teaching students when you move it from the classroom to an online setting? Uh, I can agree with what everybody else shared about, you know, one of our biggest concerns was about students not having access to the Wi-Fi. And uh, we have been fortunate that our local uh, some of our local internet providers are providing free services to and uh also uh you know we tried doing the take-home packs for some but you know there was some safety concerns that we had that precluded us from you know continuing that but uh we have really been open our teachers have off hours each every day during the week uh we reach out to parents also with remind and I think the fact that uh, we were already using a lot of online access um, was, it made it a lot familiar to our parents and to our students. So this wasn't anything just out of the blue. So I think that made it a smoother transition to online learning. Uh, I just think that, you know, one thing that I did start exploring with our, our IT department in our district was providing mobile hotspots for students and we're still at doing that so that those students that you know for whatever reason can get access if we can provide them a mobile hotspot to check out and you I think that would be a lot uh, more advantageous for us. Lisa uh, having gone through this are there any adjustments that you and your staff have maybe made on kind of on the fly as you've gone through the first week or so of it? I was laughing um, yeah every <laughs> And this was all new to, to all of us, but I cannot tell you, um, I hope I don't get emotional, but I am so proud of not only our teachers, but teachers just across the state. 
I mean, they totally, you know, a lot of our teachers have had lesson plans ready for the rest of the nine weeks or semester and we're ready to go. And they've had to flip the script on everything they're doing. They did that in the shortest amount of time. And as the counselor, I was as concerned about their mental health as I was the children because, I mean, they, you know, they totally had to, on the fly, kind of create a whole new way of teaching. And they have just risen to the occasion and just so fabulous at being flexible. Um, and it's just been amazing to watch and to see them use technology that they may not have been familiar with to tweak their lesson plans in a way that the kids and parents will be able to get it. Um, to think outside the box and do things that not only keep the kids abreast academically, but nurture them, nurture their mental health as well. I've seen a lot of our teachers, um, you know, our biology teacher had her kids take a nature walk and collect some things and they had to video her um, part of their walk and the things that they had collected and just different things like that, that, you know, thinking outside the box just has been amazing to watch during this whole process. Heather, I'll ask you the same question, having, you know, started this online learning, is there any adjustments that you've seen that have needed to be made so far? Did you say Heather? Yes. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, you're good. Well, I do, I wouldn't say we've made them quite yet, but we are going to try to come up with more ways to make it more interactive. Um, and I've heard a few things today, actually, um, from this interview that I'm jotting down and that I want to take back to my staff at our uh, next virtual meeting, um, just, just so the kids won't get bored and just to make it more exciting, even though they are at home, um, like, you know, how we use the Zoom conferences to actually see their peers and their teachers, and they may, you know, uplift them in a way, because a lot of our students, you know, their home environment may not be the best environment, and school is that escape for them. So I think that a lot of them, you know, to be able to see their peers um, and their teachers, that would be a great, a great thing for them. Ruth, I'll ask you the same, same question there. Having gone through this as well, is there any adjustments on, on your end that you've maybe seen that you would like to do online? I'm doing the same thing as Heather doing. I'm still in the way because I like <laughs> the idea that they're, um, they're having to videotape themselves and upload it. One thing I did see around the state or other places that they're doing what they call a spirit week. So there are some ideas I'm, I'm generating. I want to talk with the staff on today. I actually have a, a video conference with the staff members at five where we're going to uh, design the week, maybe for next week, spirit week, to uplift them. And our counselor has already gone out, and she did a whole session with everyone. I even had the parents reacting and crying because we all needed to be uplifted in a time such as these. So we're trying to be proactive, thinking about the mental health, just like Ms. Elmore said, because we're, we don't know. And I think what this is doing is making all of us forced to learn new things. You know, we want to learn things on our own, be lifelong learners. That's the good thing. But when you're forced to learn something new in a short amount of time, you just have to do it. And you have to do what you have to do for kids. So we're, we're making adjustments here and there. We're trying to steal ideas that are going to work with our students and that are beneficial to everybody. Pam, I'll, I'll follow up with you with the same question, Pam. Uh, any adjustments that you've seen from your end that, that you could share with, with people who may be watching this? Uh, yeah, and actually our district and our school did do the virtual spirit week. And uh, I found that it really involved the students, the parents were really excited about it. And so it was something just to kind of give them some peace of mind, uh, some uh, ways to express their school spirit. Uh, one thing that I did uh, ask the teachers to do was to post a video of themselves, you know, just, you know, talking to the students and the students admitted that it did it a world of good. And I know I, I even did a little Zoom conference with uh, some of my students and it's just really heartwarming to see our students and make sure that they're safe because a lot of people don't realize that teachers that's one of the things we wanted to see. We want to see that our students are safe. We want to see that they're dealing with this issue and that, uh, that they know that we care about them and we're there to support them. And uh, that's the bigger thing. And because we had already done so much about the virtual world and communicating, 
that our students and our parents and our staff have this open communication. We use Remind, we use other means to make sure that we have that open communication with one another. Sure. Well, that, that's excellent. And I, I think we're all very appreciative that you also consider taking the students. You know, it's, it's definitely mentally taxing on them as well as it is for you. So that's great that, that you're all thinking about that. And, and, you know, there are still people that are still trying to adjust to this online learning, uh, you know. And, and so, Heather, I'll start with you and I'll kind of go through everyone here. What are some tips that you would give to teachers and educators who are still trying to make that adjustment to the online learning? Okay, so the first thing would be, um, you know, to breathe and to know that you can do this. Don't get overwhelmed. Um, lean on your your peers, your other teachers, because there are some teachers who are experts at this. And I know that a lot of our teachers feel more comfortable reaching out to other teachers than they would necessarily to the administrators. Um, Google, YouTube is, is always my best friend. I, I, I learned everything from, from Google and YouTube. Um, but just don't, don't be afraid of it. You know, I know um, technology can be a scary thing, especially for those teachers who may not, you know, incorporate it on a daily basis. Um, but I would say, number one, just, just don't be afraid to ask for assistance. Great. Uh, Pam, I'll ask, I'll, I'll ask you the same question. Um, any tips that you would give to educators still trying to make that adjustment to online learning or what you've learned from your experiences? Well, one thing I've learned is that you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You know, there are so many resources out there and so many companies and people are making it free for educators right now that we need to make sure that we take advantage. And it's a wide world out there. And the fact that we have uh, this internet and all these resources brings everybody a little bit closer together. And so I think one of the things that I would tell them, as Heather said, you know, just relax, breathe, lean on the expertise of others, and take the time to go out there and explore and see what's out there. And then you can choose what best fits your students. Great, that's great, great advice. Uh, Clarice, I'll ask you the same, same question. Any, any tips that you would give to uh, those educators still trying to make that jump online or maybe having trouble making that jump online? Don't be afraid to fail. If technology goes, goes awry, you don't know what's going to happen. If you don't have all of the students in the class where you want them to be, don't panic. Just say, okay, I'll try this again a little later or something went wrong and try another and just try another method. Uh, the, the, the great thing, like I, I could say this over and over again, we're learning. And so in learning, you're going to make some errors, you're going to make some mistakes is what we learn from this and it's going to move us to the next level. So I'm just, the best tip I can tell them, don't be afraid to fail. Absolutely. Uh, and Lisa, I'll, I'll ask you the same question because I know it definitely, this is a new challenge for everyone. Um, any tips from your experiences so far that, that you would give to those who may be watching? I think these ladies have nailed it, but I think that I would also add, um, if you start something and you see that it's not working, don't be afraid just to back up and punt and try something different. But the thing that I think has hit me, hit home with me this week and our staff as a whole is that we have to keep our kids the main thing. Um, the technology will fall in place. The parental support will fall in place. Um, you know, keeping them on the skill level will fall in place, but we've got to make sure that our kids are okay. And this week, our staff has um, decided to go out and visit. We're going to every county two by two and just taking posters and pulling up in driveways and blowing horns. And our kids are coming out and their parents are coming out just crying and so excited to see us. They miss us when they're not at school. And, you know, I forget about that. Um, but they really do. They miss every one of their teachers and they miss their friends. And just to see us, whether it be on Zoom, I know everybody can't go to every student's house, but. Um, if there's any way you can like personalize your lesson in any kind of way, that would be my biggest recommendation because the kids are just loving it. They miss everybody so badly. Yeah, very much. That's very good advice because this is a, definitely a, a different time. And we just want to say thank you for all that you are doing to, to help our students. Uh, Heather, I, I'll, I'll give it anything else you would like to add uh, before, we, uh, before we end this webinar. 
Um, no, I think everybody's pretty much um, said it all. Great. Uh, Pam, I'll leave it up to you. Any, any ex Anything else you would like to add? Uh, I would just like to add that, you know, we just want everybody to, as uh, Lisa said earlier, you know, make sure that the kids are okay. You know, education is, is going to happen, you know, but we want to make sure that our kids feel safe, they feel comfort, and they have an opportunity to talk about how all of this is affecting them and, and in their families. So I just need everybody and as well as my staff, you know, just to take this time and take care of one another. Great. Uh, Claritha, I'll ask you any, any parting advice I guess you could give. We need to do this again, maybe not in a webinar, <laughs> but <laughs> it is fun to, to sit and talk with my colleagues about things that they're experiencing and some of the challenges that we all face. It was, it was good to do this. I, I would love for this to happen again. Uh, and Lisa, I'll, I'll ask you any, any parting advice you have. Oh, sorry. I'll unmute you now, Lisa. You can go ahead now. Okay. Um, I would just, or just to make sure that we're all taking care of ourselves. I mean, we all have families and kids and, you know, um, jobs may be in jeopardy right now. So just make sure that as an educator that you're taking care of yourself as well as your students. Great. Uh, and Cindy, I'll, any questions you have or any, any tips you would like to add? Um, I muted myself. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> I, no, I don't think I can add anything else to what um, they have said. Um, you know, I, I, I am a parent of a student in an early college high school. And just to see the overwhelming support um, and just watch, you know, from an educator's perspective, watching the adjustment in, in the teaching um, has been tremendous, you know, and watching my, you know, I'm seeing both sides of it, actually three sides as a parent, as uh, watching my son and then from the educational side. So I just want to commend all of you for a great job. Um, I know it's difficult, but, um, you know, the stories we'll get to tell and the learning that's happening and the things that we're going to get to implement in the years to come. So I'm excited about that. So thank y'all very much for a great job you're doing. And Myra, I'll, I'll ask you if you would like to add anything before we part two. I'm so encouraged by all of the wonderful things that you're doing and how even though um, you are at different schools that you are <clears throat> taking care of individual needs for all your students and um, also care of your faculty. And it is it's just really, you continue to inspire me. You always have in your daily work and that you have transitioned into this type of learning um, as seamlessly as you have is no surprise to me. And I just thank you for what you're doing. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, and I would just like to say it's, it's kudos to you for making this adjustment online in this tough time. And you're doing it for the benefit of your students. And, uh, you know, it's great that educators from across the state can come together and collaborate because you are each other's biggest proponents because you're all impacting our students. Um, but uh, Heather, Pam, Claritha, Lisa, thank you for joining us. Uh, you've provided some really valuable insights that I think a lot of other educators will get a great deal of benefit from. Uh, so thank you all for joining us today.